Hey gang, Jane back with a third video of our three-part series on making our warm hugs and daisy squares throw. In this video, we'll be working through the final steps of putting the finishing touches on our throw. This is the third and final video of this series where I've been working you through the steps to create a small throw out of one of my more popular squares, the daisy square. In the first video of this series, we covered how to change up our square edging to make this joining method easier. In the second video, we learned how to join our squares together, and as always, lots of extra tips along the way. Now we're ready to add our border and finish our project. I frequently get asked about how I join my squares and assemble my blankets and throws, so although I'm using the daisy square as my square of choice for this series, you can apply these techniques to most any granny square. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you first how I finished darning in my ends that were left from joining our squares. Then I'll cover the different border options I've used on my throws and the options for this throw. And then we'll jump into how we work our border. We'll finish off with a final blocking. You can find the first two videos and more info on this throw over on my blog. The links for all of that will be in the description below. So if you have your squares all joined and ready to go, let's get putting those finishing touches on our project. So before we jump into the border, we want to make sure all of our ends are done so that we don't have to worry about those later and they're not hanging out while we're working on the border. So what I have here is I've already worked in all the ends for my squares. I did that before I blocked them. But where I did the joins, I will have ends and I will have them all over the place. But we're just going to focus on this little section so I can show you how I darn these in. We're going to go ahead and do one at a time and I'm going to use a darning needle. And I like to use one with a nice large eye. And the point on mine is a little bit rounded, mostly because I find it doesn't pierce the yarn as much and it doesn't pierce me either. So I like these little rounded tips as opposed to a sharp pointy one, but either one will work. And again, the large eye works really well when you have this thickness of yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and get that piece of yarn onto my darning needle. So we have here the two pieces that I need to darn in. So I'm going to leave this one to the side and I'm on the wrong side of my work. So the back of the afghan, although when you have a throw, is there really a wrong side? And see, there's so many lacy holes here. I'm just going to kind of work it in up and down with the loops. So you can see here right where the yarn came out of, I try to go back in to that final stitch, but I'm in between the stitch. So I don't really want it to show on the right side. So I'm going through the center of that last stitch. And I'll just go ahead and pull that through to get started and give it a nice firm tug. And now we'll go ahead and start darning. So I literally am working my way through the center of my work. So I'm just picking up loops as I go and I'll just do a few at a time. Pull nice and gently. I use my thumb on top and my finger is underneath there and they just hold it firm while I give it a slight tug. You don't want to pucker your work, but you do want it in there nice and sturdy. Then I'm going to go up here. So I'm going to go under that one, under this one, still going through the center of my stitches. And we'll go through this one. So maybe like three loops at a time. Again, using my thumb and my finger just to gently tug so that it's in there firmly. And then I'm going to go back down into this section. So just pick up wherever you can. And there's three more loops on right through the center. And again, gently, firmly tug. So what I usually do is I'll go up and down maybe two more times. So I'll just do that while you're watching here. That's up one. Let's see, we'll go down another one. And it's okay if you split the yarn because you're not taking this out. So it can go through the center of a piece of yarn. It's not going to hurt on the back. So one more time, we're going to go up and then back down. Oops, doesn't want to loop on there. So now I started here and I worked my way up and down these zigzags in the center of the work. So it shouldn't show on the right side either. So I've taken it off. Um, make sure you have a long enough piece to be doing this. Only go about half the length of your piece because now we're going to turn around and go back the other way just to secure it. So we're going to go not into the stitch we just came out of. You want to go over top of that and go into the next one, or otherwise you're going to pull your work back out again. You're going to pull what you just did back out. 
and you're going to go back up and then you're going to work your way back down. So the shorter it gets, the more it wants to pull off. So I try to actually get as much as I can onto my needle. So it looks like you're distorting your work, but you're not. And then I'm going to go back down one more zigzag because that might be all I get out of this. So it's all bunched on that needle. So you can kind of see it there. It's all bunched on the needle. And then I'm going to pull it through, make sure it's on your hook and it doesn't, or on your needle and it doesn't fall off. Using my thumb and my finger to hold everything in place, pull it through. I'm going to pull it off my needle and now I'm going to pull it back into shape because I probably bunched it there. And there you go. That's all I have left and I will probably cut that off. So I've literally gone this way, turned around and come back this way. So that's nice and secure and it's through the center of those stitches. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this one a little bit different. Just another method that out of my way. I think we're going to take this one across here. I put my fingers through anywhere I can so that I can hold it by both sides. So this is the one that I know some people say, well, you're leaving a hole there, right? And honestly, there's enough fabric here that that will close up. If that's a concern for you, you can actually work your way around that like that. So I'm just going around this way and see how it kind of cinches it up a little bit. And then I will go back. So I go back where I came through the first time, but over top of that last stitch so I don't pull everything out. And that just kind of gives me a nice secure. It doesn't pull it up. You don't want to do that. You don't want to lose the lacy effect, but it just secures that so it's not so big of a space. So now we're going to go the same idea. We're going to go under the loops in between the stitches and maybe up to here. So three or four. Use your thumb and your finger to hold. And then I'm going to do somewhat what you would call like a back stitch. I'm going to take it and go back over top of the one I just went into, looping it around it and going back in and continuing on. In a way, I'm back stitching so that it secures it. So take it through again and we'll do one more back stitch. So I will go over the stitch that I just did and I will loop in a few more stitches and pull it through. That's probably secure enough, even though I still have all of this left over. So what I would probably do is just take this one and keep on going in the same direction. So it kind of depends on how much you've already darned in in that section as to what you want to do. But I will go ahead with this one and I'll just keep picking up a ton of loops here that work my way into the middle of the stitches like this. That's probably enough right there. So I got all sorts of stuff on there. Using my thumb and my finger to help pull the needle through. I have this end, but when I pull it back, because this is going to have a lot of stretching, so you just kind of go like that. And wherever it ends up, there's that's a different end. It's in the work now. So I'm just going to leave those. Darn all the ends in. I don't really do any clipping until after. Because like I said, I like to do my last block before I do the clipping of the ends. And now we're ready to add our border. I like to mix it up with each throw using a different number of colors and varying the number of rows. So let's look at some of my other throws so I can show you why I choose the stitches I do, depending on what square I'm using, and how colors and numbers of rounds can be used to change up the look of your throw. I almost always end my throws with a single crochet chain one border, even if I start the border with a single crochet chain two. And I'll explain this through some examples and then further when we're making our daisy throw border, but it has to do with pulling our border in so it doesn't flare out. So in this example, this gray here was the last round of the square. I did a complete round in the off white with a single crochet chain two. And then I did another complete round with just a single crochet chain one. 
I always do that first round in whatever matches the square. If the square has a chain two in it, then I do the first round all the way around with a single crochet chain two. Then I usually start into my single crochet chain one. So those last three rounds are only chain ones and they pull the edge in nicely. If we look back on this one, you can kind of see this is all chain twos here. And then we went down to the chain ones and it gives it, you can stretch it and it doesn't flare. So over time, these blankets with lots of wear can possibly flare out. So I find if I use that single crochet chain one around the very edging, the last few rows, it pulls it in enough that it doesn't matter if it gets stretched over time through washing or use, you don't really get the flare. Now this one you might recognize is my little sky. I did the little sky square and then I made a blanket out of it. The little sky square actually ends with a single crochet chain one edging around the square itself. So I stay with that. If the square has a single crochet chain one all the way around it, I won't increase it to the chain two, then it will really flare out. So in this case, I stayed with the chain one throughout the border. So I never did the chain two on this one at all because the squares themselves already had a chain one in place. So you can see here, every square was finished off with a round of white. I think in the tutorial for this particular square, I finished with the color, but I did one more round of white. And again, it's exactly the same as the round before it with a chain one. Then I did, after I joined them, I did one complete round of white with single crochet chain one this time, because that's what's coming from the squares. And then I did four more rounds of the colors because there's so many colors in this particular one. I wanted to bring them all into the border just for something different. I have had people asking me how I finished this one and that is how I finished it. So it'll be a little different than the Daisy Square one because Daisy Square we're using chain two for our first round. So again, in this one, we only use the chain one single crochet border. And I, I added quite a few colors in there. You can keep going as far as you want. But see how it kind of nice lies nice and flat like that and that's the chain one for you it doesn't flare out even when this one was a single crochet chain one now for our daisy throw i thought i'd work three samples to show you options for this one the first uses just green for the entire border it keeps it simple and lets the square stand out the second option i echoed the white and beige of the square edgings which gives it a consistent look the third option I used, just white with a green finish. It's a thinner border with a nice delicate look to it. So I have to decide what kind of border I want on this one. So I've shown you the different versions that I've used, but I do know the first round I'm gonna do will be green. And I'm gonna join it in a corner and then work all the way around my entire piece. So we're gonna start by finding one of our corners with the chain two space. We're going to insert our hook and I am using the same size of hook that I used for the square itself, which is a five millimeter. We're going to take our yarn, leaving a nice end that we can work in or work into our work, depending on how you do it. And we're going to pull up a loop that's joining our yarn. Now we're going to chain one and then we're going to single crochet in that same space and now chain two. So we're doing the same border that we did on the square itself. Into the next chain two space, you will work a single crochet and then you chain two. And then next chain two space, we will work a single crochet. And we're going to do this all the way across, all the way across the edge, the, the entire blanket itself. But I will show you because when we get to where the squares join right there, it's going to work the same as we did when we joined the strips. So I'll walk you through that before I leave you to work around the first round of the Afghan. So let's make our way over to that first join, working our single crochet chain twos across our square. See how it gives you this second row of green and just keep on working like that until you get to the next join. So here we are at the corner of the first square where it joins to the second square. So what we're going to do here is work a single crochet into the corner. Then you're going to chain two 
and you're going to work a single crochet and you get to pick. Is it going to be the first one or the second one? I'm going to go into the first one and I only do one loop and then I chain two, I skip over this one and I work into the corner just like I did for the joins and that way I find it doesn't spread it out. It kind of pulls it in a little bit, which is what you want to do because as you work the edgings, you want to be careful that you're not flaring the work out too much because then you get these afghans that are kind of like wonky around the edges and it's hard to fix that. So it's better to pull in than to allow it to flare out. So that is how you're going to work all the joints. You're just going to work into the corner, chain two, work a single crochet and you get to pick whether you do the first loop or the second loop, just be consistent all the way around. And then you chain two and single crochet in the corner and continue across the next square at which point you'll reach the next join you'll do the exact same thing you did right there and just keep on doing that until you reach the corner and i'll come back and show you how i turn the corner so here we are back at the next corner and i've been doing working these chain two single crochets all along now we have another corner in front of us so we end with a chain two then we go into the corner work a single crochet chain two and then a single crochet into that same space so that we're turning our corner so you want a little extra here so that the work can go around the corner then you go ahead and chain two and you're going to start working down the next edge of your throw so if we go back and take a look here you can see that this edging actually makes it work a little better with your joins see how your joins gave you a little extra green here so now you're creating that around the edge as well. So everything looks a little more symmetrical. So finish off your green round all the way back to where we started. And you're going to end with a slip stitch in your first single crochet. So you're going to complete the last half of the corner, just like we did with these squares. And I'll show you how to do that when we get there. And then we're going to decide what we're going to do for our second round. So I'll meet you back here at the end of round one with the green. I'm back now at the last corner which is actually where we started so i've done all four sides of my throw i have a chain two here i'm going to go into that same space that we joined in and i'm going to work a single crochet and then i'm going to chain two and then i'm going to slip stitch in that first single crochet and that will end that round now at this point if i'm finished with the green i will cut it and i will do like the four inch end to darn in later if I decided I'm going to do another round of green, I would continue on. So in order to do that, I can't go back into this corner, which is where I would normally join a new color. What I would do is I would go ahead and slip stitch into this first chain two space. So I'll just go ahead and show you how I do that. And that's where I would start. I would chain one and I work a single crochet and then I would work my way across like that but I'm actually going to start another color. So I'm going to pull that out, not too far. So this is where I have joined and I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to pull that through. So I've decided I'm going to work my next round in white. So I get my white, this color here, not the off white, but the white is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and join it in the corner. Now I could pick any of the corners and usually I do go to the another corner so that I don't have too many ends going in the same place. But for ease, I'm just going to stay here and I'm going to insert my hook into the corner and I'm going to pull up a loop, chain one and single crochet. Now, as I mentioned, I'm only going to do two more rounds, the white and the green. And on my last two to three rounds, if I've been working a chain two, single crochet chain two, I shift down to a chain one. And as I mentioned before, I do that so that my edges don't flare out. They actually pull in. And again, if this doesn't work for you, if you experiment with this and you do one and you're like, no, it's pulling in too much, you can go back to the chain two. We all crochet a little different, so you do what works for you. But what works for me when I've done the chain two, I usually do the last two to three rounds, whatever I've chosen, uh, in a chain one, single crochet chain one. So that's what we're going to do here. 
This is going to be the first round of that because the round before I did chain two. So we're going to go ahead and chain one and then we're going to work a single crochet in this chain two space. And then we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in the next chain two space. And because our last row set us up and we've already worked across the joins, this is what we do all the way around. When we hit the corners, I still do a single crochet, chain two, single crochet because you want the space to turn your corner. So go ahead and work a single chain one and a single single crochet into that space all the way across. Your work will look like it's starting to pull in a little. If it's pulling in a lot, that's a different story, but it'll start to pull in a little. And then as you work the next round, it'll just kind of even out. And when your throw is done, you'll see how it nicely pulls the edges in because edges tend to stretch. So I would much rather them have pulled in than have them stretch and flare out. So I'm getting very repetitive about that, but I, I want you to understand why I'm switching to a chain one from a chain two. So go ahead and take as in my case, whatever color you choose, but I'm using the white and work that all the way around, making sure that your corners still have the single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And I'll meet you back here at the end and we'll go ahead with our next color. When you reach the end of your round, finish with a single crochet, chain two to work the first half of the corner and then slip stitch in the first single crochet of the round to finish it off. Finally, I'll add the last round with the green, exactly the same as the round before. This one uses the single crochet chain one all the way across and working the corners the same as before. Then finish off the same way with a slip stitch in the first single crochet of the round to complete the corner and finish your throw. Now you can darn in any remaining ends from the border and the throw itself. You may notice with the joining technique that the joins may sit up a bit, but this can be looked after in the final blocking stage and it often will flatten out with use as the throw gets tossed around. Crochet is after all a texture art form and that means it has three dimensional aspects. That's the beauty of handmade items. So my final step is to give my throws a light final block. This also sets all the yarn in place and it sets my ends. I'll lay out a towel on the floor or a large surface to protect it and then I spread my throw out on top of that. Then I give it a wet block with my spray bottle or I use my steamer again. The other alternative is if the yarn is easy to care and can be machine washed, I'll often give it a wash in the delicate cycle and then I'll lay it flat to dry. Remember to check your yarn labels to see what your yarn can handle. I usually do this if a throw is going to a baby or a toddler so that it's clean and I can be sure it will survive the washer because I know it's going to get lots of loving and cleaning in its new home. And there you go. You have completed your warm hugs and daisy squares throw. I hope this helped you by watching me walk through the process of making my throw from beginning to end and has inspired you to make more beautiful granny square throws of your own. This process can be used with just about any granny square. So get creative and try another one with a different square. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel so you're sure to catch all my tutorials as they come out. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you back here for the next crochet tutorial.